Final Four continues. It is a natural source of light. As sure as the sun rises in the east, count on the NCAA tournament to produce moments that shine. Three on the way! The Hoosiers' will to win intensified as they blazed the trail to Atlanta. A smoldering fire within Maryland has fueled its trek to the title game. The Hoosiers of Indiana, the Terrapins of Maryland, they come together in the spotlight of the national championship tonight. CBS Sports presentation of Prelude to a Championship is sponsored by Honda, a versatile family of cars, minivans, and SUVs. Like an old sweet song, the basketball universe has Georgia on its mind. Welcome to Atlanta, where beneath this translucent Teflon and fiberglass roof, the largest supported dome in the world, 54,000 fans decked out in red and white, the colors of both Indiana and Maryland have gathered to cheer on their favorite teams. The surprising Hoosiers are seeking their sixth national title, while the powerful Terrapins are in quest of their first championship. Earlier, inside the Indiana locker room, while the players were getting ready, Hoosiers assistant coach Ben McDonald was writing the game thoughts for this championship night. And good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with my partner, Clark Kellogg. Welcome to Prelude to a Championship, as CBS Sports proudly broadcast its 21st consecutive NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. At the end of the evening, this coveted trophy will be presented to either Indiana or Maryland. Our tip time here in Atlanta is 9.22 Eastern time. And Clark, not all of the players will show it, but you know the emotions are there. I've got butterflies. My pulse is racing, and you know it's the same for the players. Yet after the first few minutes, it comes down to playing basketball and key matchups within the game. And there's no more significant matchup than the one of Juan Dixon versus Dane Fife. You look at Dixon, he has been outstanding throughout the tournament. His brilliance and medal has carried his team to the championship game. Dane Fife has done a terrific job defensively in the last two games, stopping Hollis Price and Trevor Huffman, and he's helped get Indiana here. That matchup will be significant throughout the game. All right, Clark, a short while ago, our Armin Kutsayan caught up with a pair of Hoosier starters, Jared Jeffries and Tom Coverdale. Tom, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you uh, rate that injured left ankle, and what do you have to do to impact this game tonight? Uh, I, I never really get into ratings and percentages and all that, but, uh, you know, it feels good. I'm, you know, I think it's going to be better tonight than it was Saturday. Um, you know, just, you know, working on it today, it feels a little bit better, and it did warm it up on Saturday, so I'll be, I'll be fine. Jared, you're facing a team that's talented, versatile, and experienced. Uh, how do you solve that puzzle with Maryland? Just a will to win. I mean, as long as we come out and play as hard as we can, that's all we can do. And I think that we come out and play our game, we can win this game. All right, guys. Good luck. Thank you. All right, thanks. Now to update Indiana's other injury. Hoosier guard A.J. Moye told us his right hamstring, which he strained in Saturday's game, is still tight. They stretched it out on the court during warm-ups. He will play tonight. Up next, we'll talk with Maryland head coach Gary Williams when prelude to a championship continues live from Atlanta in just a moment. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome on this championship night. The Maryland Terrapins looking for their first championship and the Indiana Hoosiers unbeaten in five championship games as we welcome you back here to our set in the Georgia Dome among the many Maryland alumni on hand tonight is a member of the class of 1968 and now he's the head coach of the Terrapins earlier Bonnie Bernstein had a chance to speak with him. Gary Williams and his Maryland Terrapins just getting here a few moments ago. What were you talking to the team about just now? Just go over a few uh, basic things that we do, you know, just reminders um, going into every game. We like to talk about a couple of fundamental things and, 
you know, it's it's a way to get thinking about the game more than anything else. It's not that important strategy-wise. It's just to get their minds on the game and go from here. You've got three seniors in Juan Dixon, Lonnie Baxter, and Byron Mouton. You've got that leadership. Give me a sense of, of what they've given to the team this week and, and what the mood of the team is. Well, when we were down 13-2 to two to Kansas in the huddle, I was probably the most upset person there because they knew that they had to go out and, you know, just change the tempo a little bit and do some things. And, you know, Juan hit a couple big shots and got us going. And, you know, all three of those guys have been able to do that uh, during the year for us. So uh, it's nice having that on your side, knowing that going into a game like this, that they're playing for you. As effective as Indiana's been from the three-point line, how high up on the priority list is defending that? Oh, it's big. Uh, they've won games without shooting threes, but when they do shoot threes, they're really good. So we have to try to take them out. But, you know, we have to run our offense, too. We're a high-scoring team, and when we're playing well offensively, you know, we, we've weathered some teams hitting threes and still were able to win the game. All right, Coach, thank you. Thanks, Bonnie. Bonnie with Gary Williams, and there you look at the Maryland Terrapins just exiting the court, and Clark never fails in big games. There are some players you expect to be key. There are others you don't expect, and all of a sudden, there they are in the spotlight. All right, and we're going to take a look at some of those significant players. We'll start with Indiana's Jared Jeffries, a versatile player. He's thin, but he's as strong as dental floss, and he needs to have a big game for Indiana on the boards and handling and scoring the basketball. Lonnie Baxter, he has an HD TV body and happy feet and is a true load down inside. Did not play much in the semifinal game, but he's got to be on the floor and how Indiana deals with him will be a huge factor in this game. Jeffrey Newton had a career high in the semifinal win against Oklahoma. His presence at both ends of the floor has to be strong for Indiana to prevail. And then you take a look at Taj Holden, another reserve who came off the bench and made a tremendous difference in Maryland's win the other day. All right, Clark, who wins this game and why? I think Maryland wins because of the brilliance of Juan Dixon and the senior leadership of Dixon, Baxter, and Byron Mouton in a very, very competitive, hard-fought game. All right, CK, prelude to a championship will continue here on CBS in just a moment. CBS Sports presentation of Prelude to a Championship is sponsored by Honda, a versatile family of cars, minivans, and SUVs. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Right now, we send it across the court to the men with the best seats in the house, our CBS Sports colleagues, Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Gentlemen. Thank you, Greg, and we are grateful to have those seats. Believe me, Maryland's on the floor. We await Indiana's arrival. And we have an electric atmosphere, Billy, and really a matchup. You can hear them. The Hoosiers are about to come from backstage. We do have a real powerhouse team here taking on a Cinderella. We haven't seen a matchup in a championship like this in many, many years. Jim, I feel like it's back in 83 or 85. Are we talking about Houston, NC State, Villanova, Georgetown? I don't know, but you know what? Indiana's never lost in a championship game, and Maryland has never beaten Indiana. So who knows what we're going to see tonight? And here come the Cinderella Hoosiers. They take the floor. There is a melody on their mind. It's from that movie, The Hoosiers. They really believe there's a lot of symbolism in that, and they could become just the fifth unranked team going into the tournament to go on to win the title. Billy, let's not forget the Cinderella Kansas team of 1988, the last of the to go on and win it. And yes, will this be the sequel? Starring Mike Davis in his first full year as the head coach of the Hoosiers and what an ensemble in that cast the bench so strong for the likes of Perry and Newton career highs on Saturday and this shooting all tournament long has been spectacular. Absolutely phenomenal and of course that six for six topped it off against an Oklahoma team that we knew was going to take away a lot of good looks and their headliner their star performer put him on the top of that marquee is Jared Jeffries Big Ten player of the year and despite the injuries he won that award when you look at his stats Jim he may be the most complete front court player in college basketball well really the star of this tournament though has been Juan Dixon he said yesterday I just want to be a leader one more time one more time for Maryland his last game here on this floor tonight. He has been an outstanding player, Jim. The statistics tell you he's the number one scorer in the NCAA tournament. But the look in his eye, the steely look in his eye of leadership of a fifth-year senior has really been the difference for Maryland. Billy, it should be some special night. Indiana has never lost in a championship game. Maryland has never been to a championship game until tonight. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Championship game is sponsored by
by Chevy Trucks. Burger King. Singular Wireless. And by Bud Light. For a special presentation, here's Jackie Bo. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the colors this evening are Brian Tui, Nat Harris, Tom Hoey of the Port Authority of the Police Department of New York and New Jersey. This is the American flag that flew over the World Trade Center on September the 11th. Assisting in the presentation of this symbol of unity and freedom are Karis Williams, Steve Sewell, and Daryl Tolleson of the Atlanta Police Department. To honor America and those who support our freedom at home and abroad, Please rise for the playing of our national anthem, which will be played by the University of Maryland's pep band. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Georgia Dome for tonight's championship game between the Indiana University Hoosiers and the University of Maryland's Terrapins. Let's meet the starting lineups. At forward for Indiana, listed at 6'10", a sophomore from Bloomington, Indiana, number one, Jared Jeffries. Forward for Maryland, listed at 6'6", a senior for Rainy, Louisiana, number one, Byron Mouton. At forward for Indiana, listed at 6'8", a senior from Swayze, Indiana, number 43, Jared Ogle. At forward for Maryland, listed at 6'10", a sophomore from Whiteville, North Carolina, number 54, Chris Wilcox. At guard for Indiana, listed at 6'2", a junior from Noblesville, Indiana, number three, Tom Coverdale. At center for Maryland, listed at 6'8", a senior from Silver Spring, Maryland, number 35, Lonnie Baxter. At forward for Indiana, listed at 6'5", for Junior from Anacoca, Louisiana, number 32, Kyle Hornsby. At guard for Maryland, listed at 6'3", a senior from Baltimore, Maryland, wearing number three, Juan Dixon. At 
point guard for Indiana, listed at 6'4", senior from Clarkson, Michigan, number 11, Dane Fight. At guard from Maryland, at 6'3", a junior from Miami Lakes, Florida, number 25, Steve Blake. Introducing the head coaches for Indiana, Mike Davis. And from Maryland, Gary Williams. Gary Williams tonight trying to become the first man to direct his alma mater to a national championship in over a quarter century. Former captain of the Maryland Terrapins back in the 60s. Billy Packer, let's go through the Packer points for the championship night. Well, wonderful matchup, and it certainly is because we have the best defensive player so far in the tournament in Fife going against the best offensive player in Dixon. Something's got to give right here, Jim. MOP numbers. Lonnie Baxter has been the MOP in the regional two years in a row, but look at these numbers against Kansas. You can't believe he's going to come up that way in this game. The X bench factor. Boy, have we had outstanding play off the bench. Newton was just outstanding. He is 23 for 29 in the NCAA tournament. And of course, we saw Holden come in the other night with 13 big points, but his court presence is amazing. And we talk about the perfect game. We talked about a situation with what Villanova was able to do. Well, Mike Davis said his team has already played the perfect game, and that was against Illinois. Look at those stats. Can they keep up with it? Let's go over to Armin Katayan for Thank the latest. Thank you, Jim. Mike Davis in his pregame speech drawing on his days as a defensive star at Alabama, saying Maryland must pay on every single possession defensively. No open shots, no easy shots. Bonnie? And it usually intense Gary Williams, unusually calm, joking with the players this week, saying there's so much added media attention, I don't need to increase the pressure. I'm lucky I have senior leadership to take over this team. They are poised and ready to win Maryland's first ever national title, Jim. All right, the tip controlled by the Indiana Hoosiers. Jeffries had a good steal on that tap, caught it on the way up. Wilcox on Jeffries. Open shot for Coverdale to start it. And Baxter pulls it down between two Hoosiers. Blake, tough pass picked by Coverdale. Early in the game, Blake takes chances. Fife to Jeffries, open jumper. And over the back on Mouton of Maryland. Mouton has an advantage in terms of size and leaping ability, but excellent positioning by Fife. So far, Indiana Jim has gotten two very good looks. Straight man to man, Wilcox Jeffries. And one of the things that Wilcox is very good at playing different types of offensive players. Whether they move inside or out. Coverdale inside to Odell. Over Baxter. Three misfires by the Hoosiers, and here comes Maryland. Good stop by Hornsby. Baxter gets past Odell for the first points of the championship. Well, I said the MOP two years in a row is not going to be held down to four points. Here is a pickup by Maryland. I think a very good move, something we didn't see Oklahoma do against Coverdale. They're going to make him work every time he brings the ball up the floor. Ooh, Baxter goes for the steal. Odell snaps it to Coverdale. And Jeffries, will he challenge Wilcox? Great yes. drop step. Beautiful move for the... First Indiana points of the night. Jeffries has tremendous footwork on the inside. As I said, maybe the most complete and accomplished frontline player in the NCAA. And how about Wilcox? Made it look easy. Chris Wilcox. I think Jeffries is saying we'll give him that shot. Now look at where Blake is. Unlike the situation in the semifinals, Coverdale making it up court. Oh, and Blake takes it right away from him. Here comes Blake. Baxter. Yeah, he's got Mouton, tough pass. And Coverdale Bad comes angle. right back with a second steal. Maryland did not complete. Oh, good oh, block by shot. Blake. Partially blocked. And now what will Blake do? He'll find Mouton, open baseliner. And it's Odo sweeping away. A couple of botched opportunities at each end. On both ends, you're right, Jim. These are very open looks, and neither team taking advantage of good opportunities. Boy, Hornsby wants it badly. Here he is. 
Mouton comes out on him. Floater too strong, and Baxter pulls it down. Mike Davis concerned that Baxter may have gotten his bad game out of the way with that foul trouble against Kansas. He played only 14 minutes, and another steal. That's three already by Coverdale. Hits the trailer, and oh, misses. unable to finish. Boy, Indiana not taking advantage. Some great opportunities here to score early. And through the fingertips of Baxter, nerves all over the place, fully exposed. It is really amazing. We're talking about two teams, and particularly in the case of Maryland, they do not turn the ball over very often, Jim. This year, between the assist-turnover ratio, they had 224 more assists than turnovers, and tonight it looks like it's just the opposite. Tom Coverdale, 29 minutes on that tender ankle Saturday. He says he has the confidence in that ankle now, and it did not swell up on him Sunday morning after all that play, and that's traveling on Jeffries. But one of the things Wilcox has been able to do is to force players to try to take that extra move to get the shot off because they know he is such a great leaper. We saw it on Gooden the other day in the semifinals. Maryland with four turnovers in the game's first three minutes. Wilcox... A little drop step of his own. Short on the shot and out to Hornsby. Neither team in any kind of sync offensively. Coverdale fakes the pull up three and Wilcox reaches around. Good job by Jefferson beating him down the floor. Tom Coverdale, that heavily taped left ankle that was uh, the attention of the nation. Sports fans leading into the Saturday semifinals. They had over 100 calls to their trainers from doctors all over the world. 15 different braces shipped to Bloomington. A little holy water blessed by the Pope sent to him, and it, well, something helped. But here's another sloppy moment in this game. Blake finds Baxter inside, and the easy two. 6-2, Maryland. Jeffries, Jim, with that footwork down on the inside, it's good for them to go down inside, see if they can get Maryland to have to double down so they can kick out, as we see right there. Fife hits the three just when Indiana needed it. They had opened only one for seven from the field. That is now their first three of the night after hitting seven in a row to close out the game with Oklahoma. Dixon drives one. It is in. All net. Dane Fife has done a fine job not getting caught by screens. That time, the skip pass got the ball over to Dixon rather easily. Way outside, not familiar territory for him defensively. Jeffries, that shot is the side of the backboard. Blake's running with it. Dixon, beautiful pull up. Step in two. Beautiful pull up by Dixon. Could have quickly taken the shot from outside. Since the defender coming by him, very smart play. Hornsby with a three of his own. Mouton did not have a head up there, Jim. Hornsby took it. And one of the things the Maryland players will have to realize, Indiana shoots not off the dribble, but a lot of standstill jump shots. They have shot over 50% in every game in this tournament. Baxter leaning in. Oh, Tip Wilcox. By Wilcox. Taken away by Fife. Well, one of the things Fife will do, because he's playing Dixon on the baseline, he's a tough rebounder inside. Doesn't mind traffic. Cutting pass to Terrapins, he traveled first. Thinking we'll, about the block from Baxter. We'll go to the first break. Everyone edgy early. Who can blame them? Championship on the line. Baxter has a couple of backs, buckets. Dixon with five, and Maryland leads. Maryland with the early lead here, and Billy, the Terrapins road to the championship game the hardest if you will by seed in tournament history the only ever to have to play the highest seed every game but to course, the final of course they have another five that they're playing for the championship game but it's hard to believe as you're right jim that in the history of this tournament it's never happened before holden comes in pass off the backboard taken away by the hoosiers it is amazing you would have thought that it would have happened once or twice. Here you see Nicholas picking up Coverdale. They're really going to make him work bringing the ball up the floor. Indiana's star from Saturday. Jeff Newton checking in. Number 50. Atlanta born and raised and foul away from the ball. And it's going on Holden of Maryland. 
And Indiana's road to the championship game out of the South. The shocker of Duke in the regional semifinal and then defeating Oklahoma coming back from four down at halftime here on Saturday. Beating two really number ones there Jim when you consider Duke's situation at Oklahoma which everybody said really that four or five slot there Cincinnati Oklahoma they were both ones so that's uh, pretty strong. And here is the man Newton into the ball game who has been so outstanding being guarded by Baxter. Can he continue this incredible run. Like you said his field goal percentage in this tournament is just breathtaking. He's 23 for 29 in the tournament. Another turnover. A sloppy pass inside and on the back Hornsby collides with Dixon. Neither team able to settle down right now. A lot of emotion here. As you mentioned, Maryland has never won a national championship. And Indiana has never been to the championship game without winning it. Drew Nicholas in for the Terrapins, number 12. He can score. He can shoot it. Baxter short on that shot. Great job defensively by Jeffries. Nobody there to help him out. And Mouton with the putback. An advantage at that position for Maryland. Mouton has a lot of size. He's more of a forward. Indiana playing with three guards. Coverdale comes off a screen, thought about it, said inside Newton. Jeffries waits, swatted away, Baxter. There's where Holden helped out. Dixon, Dixon looking to get fouled. And he is fouled indeed to the line. Dixon really on that play. Wasn't worried about the shot as much. He wanted to have contact created so he can go to the line where he's so proficient. Foul on Jeffries. And here's what I was talking about. You see, he's got a situation where Indiana plays three guards. So Mouton, as a small forward, really has an advantage on the offensive boards. Could be big for him. Donald Perry enters, and he had his career high in the win against Oklahoma. Ten points against the Sooners and A.J. Moye. Keep an eye on him, Billy. That uh, well, the leg tight after pulling the hamstring late in the game against the Sooners. Well, he is the most athletic player. Here's Maryland with a pickup full court. Dixon with those quick hands. Mouton helps out. Nice move by Gary Williams. He is going to put a lot of pressure on this team, particularly with Coverdale's injury taken into consideration and the fact that Donald Perry, a freshman, has been a little shaky with his ball handling. All right, Perry gets it safely to five. Jeffries working the baseline, backs off Baxter, and loose ball cleared by Nicholas. Comes charging out of there, too, three on two. It's Mouton in the lane. Good cross, but there was Moye with the job. And another Baxter offense with the putback. Jim, as you can see, Mouton is really causing some matchup problems. Now, Moye in the game, although smaller, is an excellent leaper. Indiana down 17-8. Hoosiers found themselves in this position on Saturday. And of course, a 17-point first half deficit to Duke, which they overcame. Newton jumper. That's a push. Jeffrey's second foul at the 12.03 mark. And Indiana is going to have to go to Leach early. This is a big, big foul problem because in the case of Maryland, they can come in with bulk when they go into the front line. Indiana does not, but Leach gave them some terrific minutes with two big blocks in the game against Oklahoma. Late in the first half, outstanding on Saturday was Leach. It's a similar first half situation for Jeffries from Saturday. And Jim, with 11.58, you find Indiana with only one starter on the floor against a very experienced team. That is Fife defending on Dixon. Forced him to give it up to Blake. From the corner, Holden. Another offensive rebound for Maryland. Blake tips it out to Wilcox. Holden and Leach. Leach blocks from behind. Saved by Indiana's Moye. Terrific job by Leach. As we said, he gave very valuable minutes. But with Jeffrey sitting on the bench now, Leach does not have the same offensive production. You mentioned only one starter on the floor for Indiana. They look at it. Team-wise, and the steal by Dixon. It was intended for five. Moye won't challenge him. Well, I think that Moye normally, Jim, would have been able to go up there for the block, but it looks like that leg is hampered somewhat tonight. 
A double-digit lead for the Terrapins. It's going to say they consider Newton and Moya to be like starters. Seven starters, they feel, at Indiana. But this bench, which has been such a huge part, needs to come through right now. Reach in on Blake. Good job by Blake. Doubling down on Leach, who is really not that good a ball handler. He gets the ball in the low post. Indiana, Billy, which has shot over 50% in every tournament game, only 23% at the start of this one. Billy, you look at Indiana's points, and they hit two long-range threes and the one basket by Jeffries on the inside, hard-earned points by the Hoosiers, down 11. I thought they missed an awful lot of opportunities, Jim, actually with better shots than the ones that they made, so they have to get their composure back. Match up now, Newton Wilcox, interesting. Coverdale's back on the floor for the Hoosiers. Moye on the baseline, No stuck. place to go. And Leach battling Dixon. And it's Indiana ball. They say Dixon touched it last. He thought he might have been fouled. Dixon amazing. He leads his school in both scoring and steals. First man in ACC history to be able to do that. And here he is now looking over, looking for a long pass. You have to watch him at all times going for those steals. Leach in trouble. Gets it to Newton. To the corner, Hornsby, who just checked in. Short on the open shot. Tipped out to Coverdale. Not a good sign for Indiana. Moye had to go out real quick. And Coverdale cans the three. Yeah, Moye, not many minutes, Billy. They might not be able to use him much tonight. Yeah, I think that we saw an indication, Jim, when he was not able on the break to go up there to block that shot by Dixon, or at least attempt to. That field goal by Coverdale broke a four and a half minute drought. Dixon, fade oh. away. He's perfect on the night, four for four. Dixon and Baxter now are the 14th leading duo in NCAA history in scoring. There it goes, and that Dixon steal. Dixon with his second steal. He is stuck. They say he came down with it before he got rid of it. Traveling on Dixon. Jim, he is amazing how he surveys the court with those eyes and then just goes ahead. There was that little dribble. He has such great instincts in basketball. There it is again. He sees the shots. Very seldom does he steal off the dribble. He steals on passing lanes. Just great, great instincts. He has one ritual before every game, and that includes road games. He has to have a VCR in his room. He goes to sleep watching game films of the opponent to watch their trends, and here he comes out with it again. He'll fall asleep watching that game film of the opponent. And Wilcox. Yes, too, too big, too strong for Newton. And here again, you see whether or not Blakes gets the steal is immaterial. It just puts all that pressure on Coverdale, who you know is not in good condition because of the ankle injury. And Jared Odell back in over to Coverdale. Oh, he hit the Very shot. Clutch shot by Coverdale. He comes with an edge, doesn't he? Despite the handicap, you have got to knock him out. Tough kid. Indiana's made four out of five from three tonight. Just phenomenal shooting all tournament long from behind the arc. Wilcox short on the shot. He likes the half hook. So Had a far, good look. Yes, and so far Newton hadn't been strong enough to stay with him. Coverdale on the drive. Wilcox right over to Nicholas. Pull up three. Not a good shot. There's a situation you've got to wait for Wilcox. They had the numbers. Newton in the lane, and that's a block call against Holden. His second foul. We Coverdale, how can he uh, elevate Billy off of well, penetration? You can see what leg he tried to go up, and you see how he tried to protect that ankle on the way up. And Wilcox, who is a terrific shot blocker, particularly when you've already committed. Jeff Newton, two shots at the line. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet most viable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed approximately $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Coming Jim, off the, that career high, Billy. Yeah, the game that Newton had the other day, 7 for 10 from the floor, 19 points, 6 rebounds, 4 blocks. And you're talking about a bench player. If he were to keep that up and Indiana were to win, we would have our first MOP, who's a bench sitter. Yep. And that loose ball picked up by Baxter. And that was a big break for Indiana because Baxter had that low post position he really loves. Off 
the leg of Newton, and Maryland retains. Perry back in for Fife. And with Jeffries on the bench, what Mike Davis is doing is just hoping his team can hang in, and they're doing a pretty good job. Maryland has not been able to pull away. Trailed by as many as 12, did the Hoosiers. Baxter gives it up inside. Nicholas fouled on the arm by Perry. Good interior passing by Maryland. Tom Coverdale had three early steals in this game, and he's hit a couple of long-range shots also. And Jim, you could see there on that steal where he had the lean in, he just really is playing on about one and a half legs right now. But as we said, he is so tough, so determined, former Mr. Basketball of Indiana is having some tournament. Making Noblesville, Indiana awfully proud. And Nicholas out of Hempstead, New York, knocks down two. Dixon has 11 for the Terps, 25-16, Maryland. Arm Katayan back here in Atlanta, sitting three rows behind the Indiana bench. You could certainly hear Mike Davis's instructions during that timeout, imploring his team to slow down, simply saying, Jim, we cannot run with them. We cannot run with them. Back to you. One of the things about Mike Davis that has made him so effective is he gets his players to understand where their weaknesses are, and they really respond to him. That was a tough pass to get in, and Odell helped out Perry on the floor and Coverdale at the same time. Jim, this one of 12, Billy, from two. The reason he wants them to slow down is to get into their pattern and where they get that spacing that enables them to get some clear looks. The helter-skelter game is not Indiana's basketball style. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Newton working on Wilcox. Too strong with the shot. Out to Baxter. Here we have Dixon, who's now in a situation where he is 54 straight games in double figures. Off to a real good start. He's got Coverdale on him now. Maryland doesn't recognize that, but they should get the ball to Dixon, make Coverdale work on defense. On that tender ankle. Absolutely. Maryland to inbound, 19 on the shot clock. Baxter. Wilcox, he can fire it from out there. Look at Dixon battling inside. Tipped over to, to Perry. Donald Perry penetrates. Left hand and off that, the rim. And that is exactly what Mike Davis does not want. But again, it's a freshman out there. Lob pass. Good hands. And there's the difference. An experienced point guard bringing the ball back out, setting up the pattern. Three-year starter at the point, and inside they go. Turnover. Pretty good pass. Hornsby got his hands on him. And you can see Mike Davis right now imploring his team to try to get in some half-court sets Use the clock a little bit. And another reason you want to use the clock, remember Jeffries is on the bench and has been there for a long time. He just wants to get to halftime with Jeffries not having to be in a situation to pick up that third foul. Coverdale, he thought he was fouled, tipped around to Baxter. The margin is still nine as it was when Jeffries went out at the 12-minute mark with his second. Blake, that That's pass picked pass. off by Odell. A very bad pass by Blake, trying to make the big play instead of the easy one. Third, three turnovers for the nation's number one assist man. Odal, good move inside. Second chance rejected by Wilcox. Hold on, they say he got a piece of the hand. After the game, log on to get official NCAA championship merchandise. Click on shop at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. That is the second on Wilcox. Two on Wilcox, two on Holden on the Terrapin side. Odell to the line. But those fouls, Jim, because of the deep bench at that position for Maryland, not as devastating as the situation. And here's Jeffries coming back in at 550. That surprises you. It does surprise me. He's got the game fairly close, still nine points. And he has got to make sure that he doesn't pick up that third foul in the remaining 550. Odell out of Swayze, Indiana, a town of about a thousand. Posted a little uh, Hoosiers 
video party last night for all of his teammates in his room. They watched the movie again. I would have to say, Jim, that if you were Mike Davis, you have to be, although you don't want to ever be behind, you have to be somewhat comfortable that Maryland has not been able to blow this thing open. Brian Randall in the game for Maryland, and that ball knocked out by Indiana. Maryland's passing has not been good at all in this particular game, and particularly when you take into consideration what a fine assist turnover ratio they have. Inside Baxter, tough shot. He was sandwiched between Jeffries and Odell. We've been stuck on this score for some time now. Give Indiana a lot of credit. Really tough defense down in the paint. Push on Randall. Indiana 5-0 all-time, Billy, in championship games. Only UCLA and Kentucky with more titles. That's right. Indiana's been to other Final Fours where they lost in the first round, but they have never lost when they get to the championship game. It'll be a one-and-one one for Odell after Ryan's first. Odell, that's three straight misses at the line for Odell. But right, Baxter is just cleaning things up on the rebounding. Here's fight back in there, a double screen. Oh, what a great pump fake. Push off on Fife. Fife, the Big Ten co-defensive player of the year with Travaris Bennett of Minnesota. What a performance on Hollis Price Saturday, the star of the Oklahoma Sooners. One for 11, and that's a tough shot. Maryland is not taking advantage of the possessions that they have. Consequently, Indiana is staying in this game. Very sloppy play by Maryland. Under five minutes to play in the half, still a nine-point game. No one has scored for over three minutes. Up in the air. Hornsby steps in, has the open two, and there you go. He actually pumped fake two Maryland players off the ground. Mouton. And they have to call a timeout because nobody's back to get the ball in bounds. With Blake out of the game, poor communication. Timeout Maryland with a seven-point lead. Indiana trying to win the title with... More than 10 losses, 11 losses. Last to do so, Kansas, 1988. And you can see Gary Williams very annoyed with Blake's play. Doesn't have him in here. Good Baxter. job by Jeffries. He's in trouble right here. A bad place to be. Oh, look at Newton pin it right against the rim in the glass. The Jeffries had to back away, didn't he, Billy? He, he really did, and Jeffries did a good job not picking up that third foul on this play and you see how he backed away there because he was in very precarious position defensively the arrow belonged to Maryland Baxter he keeps trying that over the back that's a foul on on Holden that's going to be his third now one of the things Jim Newton is playing 20 minutes a game but he very seldom is called upon to play these kind of sustained minutes and that was caused with Jeffries being in foul trouble early. Coming up after your local news, stay tuned for the uh, Emmy Award-winning Late Show with David Letterman and all-new Dave coming your way tonight. Looks like uh, Baxter just keeps kind of like tossing it in the direction. They keep working it inside. He has 10 attempts. Another miss at the line on front end of a one-and-one. One. Well, I think one of the things that he maybe has underestimated both Newton and Jeffrey's ability to be a little bigger than he thinks they played, so he's not getting that space, consequently having to take a bad shot. And that's tied up. Boy, great defense by Fife. Even though Dixon thinks he can beat him with quickness off the dribble, Fife had excellent footwork. Maryland's gone cold, missing its last six shots over five minutes without a field goal. Jim, we've talked about the eyes of Juan Dixon, and there he is again, anticipating the pass. Watch those eyes. Here he comes right around the side. Picks the ball off the best. 328 career steals coming into this ball game. Little full court zone pressure now by Maryland. Jeffries still on the floor. Indiana living dangerously. He has two fouls. Coverdale. And up for the rebound. Coming out with it is Hornsby. 
Excellent offensive rebound because that shot was taken to the point where Maryland had inside position. It's hard to believe Maryland has been shut down at the other end of the floor for almost six minutes. I think it has been the lack of good passing more than it has been ba bad shots. Patience. Lack of patience. On this end, though, on this possession by the Hoosiers, eight seconds on the shot clock, Newton misfire. That was a pretty good possession, though. They got a kind of shot that they wanted. And here it is, Newton on Baxter. Kick by Jeffries, reset the 35. Coming up, singular at the half, Greg and Clark with first half analysis, plus Dickenberg with a beautiful tribute to the tournament coaches coming from the heart. Coming Je up, Jim, I'm gonna go back. Half. I'm gonna go back to Newton playing 20 minutes a game. These extended minutes, another bad play by Maryland. And Wilcox oh. gets the roll. I have never seen Baxter fumble as many balls. He normally has sure hands down in low in traffic. Six minutes and ten seconds between baskets for Maryland. Good double down by Dixon. Mouton now realizing Hornsby is not going to dribble and shoot. He wants to stand still, so he really gets tight on him. Coverdale trying to create something. That tipped out by Dixon, but only eight on the shot clock. And there's Coverdale's lack of explosive ability, Jim. He would have taken that ball all the way to the basket normally. All right, Randall on the floor, Baxter out. Six on the shot clock. Coverdale and Dixon forced that one out of there. Wilcox on the side. Wilcox gives it up, Mouton. Squeezes past Jeffries, tipped up Wilcox, and out to Coverdale. Another missed opportunity by Maryland with numbers. Fife steps past Randall. And a misfire on their end. You really get the feeling, though, Maryland could have blown this thing open, Billy, there don't you? No question about it. And I think the difference in Gary Williams is sitting him is the fact that he hasn't gotten Blake to settle down and run his team's half-court offense. And he's really been discouraged with him. And he's spending his time on the bench. Randall. And nice roll. Very nice move by Ryan Randall, junior from Duncanville, Texas. And here again, we see that zone trap with Dixon in the middle. Moye is going to come back in. Armin Katayan reports Moye not getting minutes. It's not anything physical is the word he's getting from the Hoosier bench. So Moye will get back in after only two minutes of action. Hornsby, he likes that shot. Wow. He's got a chance for the four-point play. Dixon got him on the hand. Great follow through that time by Hornsby. He did get hit on the hand, but powerful enough on the wrist. Watch this right here. He'll get hit right on the hand, but that's the difference, Jim. You hit a guy on the elbow, and you destroy the shot. You hit him on the hand, and on the follow through, he can still get the shot. Mike Davis loved it. His team hanging in there. Despite some adversity with a foul trouble. And I would think he would get Jeffries out of the ball game with 112 to go. He's just down eight. Doesn't want to pick up that cheap foul now. Well, Newton's going to check in. Good and move he, here. Yeah, coming in for Jeffries. Now he might not be able to get him out until this foul shot is put up. Well, they have to make it then to get him in. Yep. <clears throat> Indiana's missed its last four at the line, and Kyle Hornsby. Talking yesterday, trying to defend all this talk about Indiana and how do they compete with these teams. He said we're athletic enough, and I can promise you we're determined enough to get the job done. Another one of the kids on the team with a small town background, just like the coach right there from neighboring Alabama out of Fayette, Alabama. Team with small town values. Hanging tough here. Maryland's led throughout. We'll be right back. Maryland 29, Indiana 21, Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Armand Katayan, and Bonnie Bernstein. Foul trouble on the Maryland side with Holden. Three, Wilcox two. Hornsby to complete the four-point play. And that'll just mean that Randall and Baxter will get a little bit more playing time. They have missed five in a row at the line. This is amazing because Maryland has been in another oh, steal. Moye. And Moye read it right. He anticipated when Baxter would try to block it and a push off on Moye right away. 
He is so quick in his leaping ability. Even with a Baxter down there, he goes right on through him. Steve Blake having all kinds of problems. Comes back to meet the ball. Moye just beats him to the spot. And there again, he's powerful enough to go up against a Baxter. That's only the sixth team foul in the half on Indiana. One minute to play in the first half. Now Gary Williams going with three guards. He's got Blake, Dixon, and Nicholas out there. So he is now matching Indiana. Blake in the lane. Gets the roll. That was good defense, too, by uh, Indiana. Blake just was able to go ahead and get that shot off. Normally, Jim, when he drives, he looks to pass. Indiana can almost run it all the way down if they want. One second differential. Down by as many as 12 in this first half. Trailing throughout. Rand Randall should be a, a very aggressive here because he can afford to go out there and give Newton some problems. How about this? The shot clock ahead of the game clock. Should have shut it off. Coverdale banks it home to end the half. Well, Maryland allowed Indiana to stay around, and Indiana did the job. And there's Tom Coverdale's father. Liked it. A real jittery beginning here. It was not pretty basketball the first half, but it is competitive at halftime. No question about it. Coverdale banks it home to end the half. A 7-2 close to the half for the Hoosiers. Terrific job, as I said, on one and a half legs. He is a tough kid. All right, Bonnie Bernstein, take it away. The Terps holding on, but Gary, what happened during that six-minute scoring drought that really prevented you from pulling away? We didn't run any offense. You know, we're sloppy with the ball. We're not playing great right now. We have to play better. Uh, I think we know it, so hopefully we'll be able to get it done the second half. Thanks. Maryland 31, Indiana 25 at halftime. Greg, Clark, and Dick coming up when we continue in a moment. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Championship game is sponsored by Mountain Dew, United Airlines, UPS, and by American Express. I'm Greg Gumbel at the Georgia Dome. Coming up on Singular at the Half, we'll bring you Clark Kellogg's analysis of the first half and Dick Enberg with a special tribute to coaches. That's next right after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. At the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, we are halfway to the crowning of a new national champion. Our score after 20 minutes of play, Maryland 31, Indiana 25. And this unique perspective of the Georgia Dome in downtown Atlanta is provided courtesy of the Saturn Lightship. Welcome to Singular at the Half, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. This Indiana team has proven itself a strange team over the last two halves of basketball that they've played. They've shot 80% from behind the three-point line, but just 50% from the free throw line. I'm joined by Clark Kellogg, and this has been a strange first half. It really has been. Indiana has to feel really fortunate, Greg, to be within six points. The three-point shooting, the difference. They had to play a lot of that first half without their best player, Jared Jeffries, and when he was on the floor, he wasn't very productive. Look at the shooting percentage 32 percent and they missed some good shots Greg they got layups they got good open shots the three-point shooting saved them they missed free throws Jared Jeffries we talked about at the top how important he is to Indiana's success early on he got denied on shot attempts inside and really struggled here he is trying to get inside one block a good look there missed and then ultimately out of frustration I think he shoves there and picks up his second foul only on the floor for 13 minutes in that first half. At the other end, the brilliant one, Juan Dixon. He's had 11 points, a steal right there leading the two of them. And Baxter has been doing work inside, six points and nine boards for him. All right, let's go now to our Mountain Dew Eye Vision. Here you see Baxter again working that glass. Maryland's dominated points in the paint. But here, Indiana, we're going to show you why they're in the game because they've knocked down five three-pointers. The ball goes from one side to the other. You see the penetration by Coverdale. 
the lead for Newton, and now Hornsby all alone at the three-point line. He got the hoop and was fouled, but Indiana only two of seven free throws. He missed the foul shot. All right, Clark. This and now an Enberg essay presented by Pacific Live. While most of us have been following the riveting action during the three weeks of this NCAA tournament, our colleague Dick Enberg has also been focusing his attention on the men they call coach. Dick? All right, Greg. It is a powerful title, coach. Why is it so respected and revered? Well, here in Atlanta, Roy Williams of Kansas echoed the commitment of men and women worthy of being called coach, saying, they're my players here. They'll still be family 30 years from now. My coaches were my second fathers. They had a positive influence on my life, much like millions of you watching tonight. Anyone who ever played any sport at any level. So we watched them, coaches, on this national stage for the past three weeks. Their actions reflecting those of all coaches, reminding us why they are such a special breed and why they engender a lasting and profound impact. Teachers under pressure delivering spontaneous, fast-paced lesson plans. Months of study crammed into a 30-second motivational lecture. Knowing when to scold and when to hold. It's an exhausting run that dictates reluctantly accepting the confusing. And at times, the drama too painful to watch. And just when you think you've seen it all, oh my. The coaching job description demands they orate, flagellate, placate, and of course exhilarate. And as certain as a slam dunk, coaches care about their players passionately, father figures. It's there in the deepening furrows and the eyes of hopes dismissed. All the while, swallowing disappointment to march with dignity in difficult defeat. And in that glorious moment of rare victory, where do coaches joyfully run? To their coach in the crowd, to seek confirmation from the man who cared about them. They lean with the responsibility of empowering hope, to teach with trust. Rewarded by being trusted. That's why they coach. An hour from now, we'll see either Mike Davis signaling a season's end. For some players, a career will be over. But for the man on the bench, it doesn't end tonight. For him, it will never end. Because he will always be coach. To be sure, critics uh, would say, hey, coaches have become financially rewarded gloriously, but it didn't start that way. Each of the final four coaches here began his college coaching career for less than $8,000 a year, minimum, just to support his budding coaching habit. In fact, Indiana's Mike Davis, he started his coaching career at Miles College in Birmingham, where he was paid $200, not a week, not a month, a year love of the game you hit the right of the head dick it's just fun to be able if you're fortunate to be able to call somebody coach thanks very much thank you this season singular has been searching for college basketball's most expressive fan and here's billy packer with the winner all year long singular wireless has been asking what do you have to say today we are proud to present the winner of singular's most expressive fan promotion here we have him dave dial he'll also receive one full year of singular wireless service absolutely free congratulations from singular the company that champions self-expression of basketball fans everywhere nice going thank you it's it's huh? yes, sir. thank you singular nice it's going. great thank you all right, Billy, as we look ahead to the second half now, Clark, Indiana has proven themselves to be slow starters here in Atlanta. Five points in the first seven and a half minutes against Oklahoma, eight in the first nine and a half here against Maryland. Well, I think the key for Indiana this half is they've got to get better play from Jared Jeffries, and they've got to do some damage inside offensively. For Maryland, squeeze the orange because when they take care of the ball, they get high-quality shots, and they've shot a pretty good percentage. All right, Clark, we thank you for watching. Singular at the half. Which team will be cutting down the nets tonight? Indiana? or Maryland. Jim and Billy are back with the second half of the national championship game right after this.
CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Juan Dixon's 11 leads all scorers. He took only four shots. He hit all four of them for the Terrapins. And Billy, let's check in with the Mountain Dew Eye Vision. Now, what we're going to see here is a good solid screen creating a pick and roll situation, but the ball will stay in the hands of the dribbler. And Indiana executes a nice play to end things at the half. Coverdale's got the screen. Here he's got everybody occupied, so he takes it right down inside. A terrific play to end the half. And Jim, when you look up at this score, it was not a well-played half by either team. But if you're Indiana, you've got to say, we can play a lot better just down six. Coverdale and Hornsby led the Hoosiers side with eight each. We'll be back with the second half. Here comes Maryland, back in a moment. CBA Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Championship game is sponsored by Pontiac. Microsoft, Midas, and by Miller Lite. And Billy, a quick check here of the Microsoft Agile move of the first half. Well, Hornsby has had an excellent half, probably has played as solid as anybody on the floor. Here you see him getting two players from Maryland up off the floor. You know he doesn't want to dribble drive. And yet two players go off the floor, give up on the three. Hornsby hits it. He's been very solid. Let's uh, check in here on your points before the game, Billy. How are they shaping up here? Well, the matchup for, for Dixon, he has 11 points, but he's only got four shots. So Fife has done a fairly good job on him. No breakout right there. MOP numbers, I would say this. Baxter has been sloppy with the ball, so he hasn't done well inside. But nine rebounds are pretty big. He has no fouls, so that's good. The X bench factor has been no factor. Newton has had to play an awful lot of minutes and hasn't been productive in that role. And as far as playing the perfect game, boy, Indiana's a long way from that. But they are in a situation only six down. They are not playing well from a rebounding standpoint. They've only shot two of seven fouls and turning the ball over, Jim. And they're four out of 20 from two and missed their last five free throws, including a couple of front ends of one on ones. Let's go over to Armand Kate and Armand. Billy, you must be reading Coach Davis's mind. He said, this is the worst we could possibly play. He said, I hope we can't play any worse than this. We're only down by six. He said, we're much too tight. We have to settle down. We need to play in the moment. And he said, we have to be much more aggressive on the inside. Back to you, Jim. He's got to like his position. Down 12 at one time in the first half with his star. Jeffries on the bench with two fouls. Dixon. Air ball. His first attempt since 10 minutes to go in the first half. Well, Fife fell down very hard, but he's back up on that and that's why Dixon was so wide open. You don't see Dixon shoot jump shots air ball wise very often. Defense really packed in. Odal tough shot. Wilcox stood his ground. He really did Jim. Didn't try to block the ball at all. Just played good position defense. Tough pass. Jeffries reached in. On the floor Baxter has it. This game is one of the poorest played games I've seen in a Final Four in a long time, particularly with what we expected. And neither team can get in sync at all. It's been that way from the start. Baxter, again, just throwing it in the direction there. He's 3 of 11 from the field. And you have to realize, Jeffries is not going to pick that third foul up right there on the play, so he should have gone strong to the basket. Pass too steep for Jeffries. Mouton came over to help out. That is not a boo of the play. That is Mouton, the Maryland fans, giving the moo signal. They test Jeffries with those two fouls, and Wilcox backs him in for the basket. And Gary Williams wants Blake to pick Coverdale up as hard as he can, make him have to work. I'd expect Maryland, based on the way Gary Williams wants to play, to really bang this ball down inside when they get possession. Coverdale takes Blake inside. Too strong with the shot. Baxter in double figures now with rebounds. A lob. Mouton caught it on the way down. 
Again, every play is just a little out of sync. It with really, the, the, the players are extremely tight, and if you're Blake, you've had a very poor first half with three turnovers. You haven't gotten your team into play. You do not want to throw this kind of pass. Now, I realize Mouton could have put it away, but that does not get your team into the flow that your coach wants. Newton in for Odell. Nobody open. Telegraph pass. Another turnover for Blake. We're talking about the number one assist man in the United States. Just turning the ball over one pass after another. Nobody coming to it on the out-of-bounds situation. A poorly played game. Jeffries with Baxter behind him. And hey. oh, brought down. What a stuff by Lonnie Baxter. Give Dixon credit for it, too. He felt the pressure. He sure of, did. Of Dixon coming over to help out. And look at the quick hands. Last Jeffries has Jeffries. to be careful yes, on that. You reach in close. play. And here's where you see Dixon coming in. Jeffries re realized he was coming, so he was concentrating on Dixon for the slap. That gave Baxter an opportunity to be waiting on him. Had one Wilcox basket in this half. Not the shot again, and I think Gary Williams will take Blake out of the game. Misfire by Blake. The only basket by Wilcox in this half. Hoosiers have not scored in the first three-plus minutes. And Blake needs to put more pressure on Coverdale. And... Inside and Wilcox. Jim, what we're, what we're seeing because of the lack of spontaneity on the part of both teams, every pass is being telegraphed. Consequently, the defense can be in position to make it very difficult to complete. And even if you do complete it, you're not in position to score. Lake out. We'll see Nicholas really handling the point chores for the Terps. Hornsby, guns. Jeffries rebounds, gets the roll for Indiana's first basket of the second half. Boy, how important is it for Indiana to have him on the floor? And let's see if Nick lost, and I was right. Blake was taken out of the game immediately and sent right back in. I think Gary Williams gave him the lecture. Here comes the half hook. Foul on Indiana. And that foul called. Call the Coverdale. Jim, we have had one careless pass after another by Maryland. Indiana doing a good job defending, but you see these turnovers in that first half. There were 10 assists and 19 turnovers by these two teams. Blake right back. Well, I think what we saw right here is Gary Williams realizing he has got to get his point guard moving. And if he would have put him on that bench for an extended period of time, he sends a message to him that I've given up on you in the game. So. It's a nice piece of coaching, but Blake will have to get it together. Coverdale goes out on the Indiana side. Perry comes in. And Nicholas, the top sixth man at Maryland the last two years, hits two more at the line. Blake, uh, here's that uh, Perry court trap. Team, and he's in all kinds of trouble. Has to call timeout. No, I oh, think there's a foul call on Wilcox. Yep. An excellent full court zone trap by Maryland, but the reach in by Wilcox cost him. Gary Williams having to have a team completely out of sync in this game. And it all starts with the point guard. Now Gary Williams, a former point guard at Maryland. And captain back in the 60s. Fife with the pull up three. Good idea. And what do you take a look at it if it had been for the foul shooting Indiana would be right in the middle of this game they have been very good from the outside and so far Dixon has not been able to get the ball in shooting position only four shots in the first half and one in this half he averaged 17 shots a tournament game that's five on him Baxter that time banks it home that was about his first normal release in the game Jim I would agree with that Rest of them it looked like wild. Tosses. Just throws, yeah, throws at the backboard. From two, five of 24. Here's another three point launch. Five for three. A 
And Dixon had to leave Fife to help out. And nobody again back to take the ball in bounds. We're talking about a Maryland team is the only team in the country to beat number one, Kansas and Duke. But tonight looking like a team that's totally confused. Indiana 7 out of 11 from behind the arc. Another and a steal telegraph. by the Hoosiers. Another telegraph pass. And you can see Indiana gaining confidence with every possession. Jeffries thought about challenging, wisely pulls back. They've cut it to four. Inching their way back in after an early 12-point deficit. Maryland has never trailed. Dixon with the quick hands one more time. Dixon's going to start to take this over himself. Blake. Frustrated. But Blake is really having the kind of night Gary Williams will soon have to abandon him. You know the pressure's picking up. Indiana ball. Now the Hoosiers knock down a couple of threes. And this Cinderella bunch is fighting their way right back into the championship game. Billy, what do you see here on this Pontiac Vibe Skycam? This is one of the few times that we have seen Maryland execute properly. The ball goes on the outside, a good solid screen. Baxter rolls behind the solid screen and gets a nice layup that is the first time tonight we've seen him take his half hook that looks solid. And Nicholas, Blake, and Dixon in the game, so Gary Williams going with a three-guard unit. Meanwhile, Coverdale on the bench for Indiana. Dixon almost read that one right. And in got fact, it. he does from behind, picks his pocket. Nicholas charging. And they say Newton got a hand on it. He's upset about that. Good hustle by Newton getting back. Good two-on-one break action that time. And again, it's unbelievable how Dixon has those quick hands for the steals. And a reminder, we're a week away from a tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS, and we'll go from that Masters promo to a man named Nicholas at the line. We're accustomed to talking about Nicholas here in the state of Georgia. But it's usually about green jackets. Well, this Maryland team next to St. John's had the best foul shooting record in this NCAA tournament. Number two all time. Nicholas hits one of two. And we might have a man who will win that green jacket in attendance here tonight. Phil Mickelson among the many tour players who have come out for this one tonight. Hornsby thought about letting it go from three. Good patience here. Nice call by Jeffries to bring the ball out. The game is definitely being played at Indiana's tempo. Fife shakes his head. Didn't want it. Five on the shot clock, and Newton was losing control of it on the way in. Sloppiness prevails again. Perry on the reach in. Well, Niklas did the smart thing just hanging on to the basketball. Jim, when I start talking about the pace of this game, coming into the NCAA tournament, Maryland was the fourth highest scoring team into the tournament. Indiana was the 56th out of the 65 teams. But you can see when you look up at the score that this is going to be more at the Indiana tempo than Maryland unless they turn things around. Say no foul there. What had happened is the shot clock was malfunctioned. Another and telegraph pass. It just continues every trip on both ends. So it seems Newton inside. Oh, somehow got that one all net. And look at it again. They're picking up full court. Dixon running away from the ball that leaves Blake all by himself. Three point game. Under 13 to play. Indiana picking up much higher. Jeffrey's way out. Somebody's got to be open underneath. Blake drives right past him. You wonder what Jeffrey's was doing out there, Jim, out of position, leaving the paint unguarded. Heady play there by Steve Blake. And what may happen there for Blake to get a basket may give him some confidence. Hornsby, three-pointer, yes! Hornsby has been the most solid player in this game on either team. And that includes Dixon because he has not been able to get his hands on the ball the way Fife is guarding him. Hornsby with 11. 
Dixon over Fife. Fife right in his face. Dixon has not scored in this half, has not scored since 10 minutes remained in the first half. Hornsby for the lead. Got it. Rattles no. out. Tipped up. Yes, Indiana has come all the way back to tie it. That is Newton that got that tip. Great defense. Fife on Dixon has been the story in this second half. Maryland and the Gary Williams can't figure out what team he's watching. And they are going wild, not only in Atlanta, but at Assembly Hall as well. It's March Madness. Back in Atlanta, live aerial coverage provided by the Saturn Light Ship. Full court pressure by Indiana picks up the tempo. Let's see if Blake settles down with that one basket that he has. Baxter. Fine feed inside that time by Dixon. Baxter catching the ball and putting it away, Jim, like we're so used to seeing him. Hornsby, Hornsby just not strong enough to stop him there. His second. Baxter to the line. Jim, when you look at this game, Indiana has scored 24 points from three. Maryland has scored three. That's 21 points difference in one phase of the game. Pulling, Newton pulling Baxter out, trying to get Jeffries a low post position. And that's a block call against Blake. This Indiana shooting. Again, so odd in that they're better from three than they are from free. They're two out of seven from the line and over 50% from behind the arc. We'll be right back. We're back with a two-point game and the two leading scorers on the season for these teams, both with numbers they're not accustomed to. Four for Jeffries, 11 Dixon. Dixon has gone, Billy, 19 minutes on the game clock without a point. Well, we talked about that matchup in the points, and Fife has done such an incredible job keeping the ball away from him. Wilcox won't let him get the ball into Jeffries. Now he's got the angle. Jeffries inside, ties it at 42. Excellent passing. Jeffries was patient enough to finally get the angle on Wilcox. Good job by Indiana. An entirely different team than we saw in the first half. Now they're patiently using that spacing. Wilcox gives it up, Baxter, rejected by Jeffries. He stuffed them right back, just as he had been the victim of earlier. Jeffries in the paint. Indiana looking for the lead. It's first of the night. Hornsby. <laughs> Nicholas stepping in, Baxter. And Hornsby commits his third. Indiana shooting the three in the second half. Billy, what do you see here? Well, they're just taking good shots. They're getting their spacing. This is now Mike Davis basketball we're taking a look at. Much more patient the first half, throwing the ball around. They were rushing too much. Boye comes in for Indiana. Hornsby goes out, young man who was solid when everybody else was shaky. Mike Davis gives him a big hug and a smile. And He'll he's be back in there shortly. Smiling right back at him. Lonnie back. Missed them both. Gary Williams getting very exasperated over there, Jim. He knows his team is playing a game that he's not familiar with. Another good position. Jeffries count the basket. Indiana has its first lead of the final. And now nobody coming back. Look at how confused Maryland is. Newton almost picked off another one. Now Blake splits the defenders. Back outside. Dixon for the lead back. Yes. Huge play. 45-44 Maryland. Juan Dixon's first field goal since the 10 3 mark of the first half. Over 20 minutes. A change in the defensive assignment. Now it's going to be Baxter taking Jeffries inside. Five. Just glances the rim. Maryland ball. 
The ball would have gone anyway. So the goal 10 was unnecessary for the call, but excellent positioning, good angle passing by Indiana. Dixon hit that big three against Connecticut when they were down three late in the game in the regional final. And Newton on the hack sends Baxter to the line. Thursday, all new Survivor, don't miss a competition. Filled with excitement, split second timing, and controversy. The number one reality series, all new Survivor, Thursday here on CBS. Young man who had quite a career. This is his last game, one of the members at bedrock of this Maryland team. He hits the free throw this time, the senior class with 109 wins, Billy in their four years. I mentioned that he was two times the most outstanding player in the regional in regionals. Two players, Jim, have been three times most valuable players. Bill Walton and a guy by the name of Kareem Jabbar. But only 10 people in that category and Baxter being one of them. But had two at least. Baxter hits two and it gives the Terrapins a three point lead. And there was Dixon again looking for the steal but he has to realize Fife has been pretty solid from three so he gets back on his man. Indiana patient 10 seconds on the shot clock. Remember what they got the pick and roll in the end of the first half with Coverdale having the ball. Fife for the tie. Mouton slaps it out but it's over to Fife. Nobody closing in on the ball. The Maryland guards running away from it. Fife with a big second half. Eight in the half, 11 on the night. Holden. Dixon wants to drive now. Fade away. Yes. And there's a case. If he can get the touches, Jim, he can score. But Fife has been keeping the ball away from him. I think Maryland's got to set up some plays to get Dixon the ball more often. Now it's Holden on Jeffries. And you can see that Indiana wants to turn this into a half court game. Stay away from the runs. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Jeffries leans in, thought he was going to be fouled. Blake with the long rebound. Here's where Blake's had trouble with decisions. That ball tipped out of bounds by Indiana. It'll be Maryland ball when we come back. He is trying to make home run passes in games that don't require it. Indiana took the lead ever so briefly, but Dixon with five points here in the last few minutes. Maryland back ahead. Maryland ball plus the three-point lead, and uh, Billy... What do you see here? Well, Jim, the key in this ball game has been the point guard player, the lack of it for Maryland from their standpoint. There are only three guys in the history of the NCAA tournament, Bobby Hurley, Chris Corsiani, and Ed Cota, who have over 1,000 assists. Blake is one of those guys next year could get to that point. But so far tonight, he has made terrible decisions. There's a great pass by Holden. Baxter with the slam, and the lead is now up to five. Good scout, solid screen, picks Blake off. Coverdale's open in the corner. And Moya was trying to get it there. He was fouled by Mouton. CBS Sports Line stat of the game. What else? Let's check the threes. Without question, look at the differential. 24 to 6. And you're talking about a game where, where you're down by 5, but you lead 24. You lead by 18 points from 3. You can get complete recap of the tournament. CBS.sportsline.com, America Online, enter the keyword. CBS Sports Line, under seven minutes to play. Maryland on a 9-2 run after Indiana grabbed its only lead of the night. Inside to Jeffrey Newton, and it's knocked away by Baxter. Moyer on Dixon, little change of pace. You see Fife coming right back in. Maryland ought to try to get the ball to Dixon with Fife out of the game. They're not even looking for him. There, there he is, is, low post. And pinned by Moye and company. Loose ball, tipped around. How tough on loose balls has Indiana been tonight? 
Hornsby spins away from Dixon. Again, watch the spacing of Indiana. Trying to force Maryland to play the full half-court area here to get something open inside for Jeffries. And they get a foul. Going to be on Baxter. Wednesday on The Amazing Race, a new adventure begins when the seven remaining teams race from the heart of Africa to the bustle of Bangkok. Don't miss an all-new Amazing Race Wednesday here on CBS. Donald Perry comes in for Coverdale. Just trying to give Coverdale probably, Jim, a two-minute rest. Moye nowhere near his physical ability, and that hamstring pull must have really hurt him. One last rest before the stretch drive. Indiana, that lead, Billy, they had it for only that one time tonight, and they had it for only a few seconds. Dixon hit the three at the other end for the lead right back. 13 seconds, I'm told, is how long Indiana has led. Newton, good move, but didn't finish it. Good weak side rebounding that time. Again, the smart play by Dixon, anticipating the ball coming to the other side. Maryland fans on their feet. Dixon inside, and Jeffries influenced that shot big time. And throws it away. Right back to Maryland. Just a terrific play by Holden. Jeffries on a sensational defensive play, and then maybe without Coverdale in the game. Coverdale, Jim, would have come back to that ball and taken it away from Jeffries. And there was a situation the freshman guard, again, without the experience, cost him. Coverdale comes back in. Mike Davis says, I want a timeout. Gary Williams trying to lead his alma mater to its first ever title. Jim Nance with Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein, Armand Katayan. Five-point lead, Maryland. Five minutes to go for the national championship. Indiana has not hit a field goal in over three minutes. High screens now by Maryland, trying to get Dixon the ball. Holden push off against Jeffries. This will be Jeffries. It's his third, but uh, they put Jeffries on the bench, and at a point in time in this first half, remind me an awful lot of the Indiana-Duke game, Jim, when Duke did not put Indiana away in that first half, when they really had the opportunity. Jeffries sitting on the bench, and Indiana was able to hang around. Maryland got sloppy, and that's why they find themselves in the position they're in right now with a lead, but not where they could have been had they played their traditional basketball game. Dixon goes to the bench. Mouton replaces him. That's the seventh team foul, so it's a one and one for Holden. Good roll for Holden. Been a solid player in this tournament for Gary Williams, particularly on Saturday, his first double figure output since January the 31st with 13. It's two of two here. With Coverdale in, Blake picks up full court. Coverdale's had all the rest he's going to get for the rest of this game. Bonnie Baxter's played a lot of minutes in his second half. Of course, he only had the opportunity to play 14 minutes on Saturday, so he should be well rested. And Indiana being very patient. Their offense is run dry here. Saved by Jeffries. Under 10 shot clock. Outside shot. Reach in on Fife. That'll send Baxter to the other end, one and one. Well, Lonnie Baxter with those strong hands, it's the kind of thing that a guard cannot afford to try to go after him because he pins the ball extremely well on both ends. That's why I was very surprised in the first half when he was having trouble just fumbling the ball on passes. Baxter. Again, who grew up I'm 10 minutes away from College Park, always dreamed of playing for the Terps, missing on that front end of the one and one. The poorest free throw shooter on the floor for Maryland is Baxter, but he goes to the line a lot. There's the back screen for Odell, trying to get Hornsby the look. Hornsby, good look, and hits the three. Terrific set play by Indiana. Four minute, 10 second stretch between baskets, but it's a uh, Big one at the 4-10 mark. Four-point game. Defense! 
Blake wide open. open. He likes it from here. Rattles out. Mouton, what a save. New shot clock here for Maryland. A great example why Juan Dixon was saying every player on this team will tell you Mouton gets a lot of the dirty work done. He's a special player for us. Keeps the possession alive. And inside, Nicholas finishes off. How about the presence of mind of Holden? That was a touch pass supreme. I thought he was going to try to put up a shot that probably would have been blocked. Fife, three-pointer. And Baxter has a season-high total in rebounds. 14. He is very tired, though. He looked at Gary Williams to try to go ahead and get a timeout here. Over the top, Baxter pushed. And he'll be shooting, too. How about Mouton getting it, it done here? It was. Uh, Blake had the wide open shot. Mouton realizing to throw that ball out to Blake, who was positioned right where he took the three point shot. And Dixon goes to Baxter and waves at him get a follow through on your foul shot. Working with his fellow senior. Mouton. He asked for the follow through and yep. got it. There he is, Mouton. Learned a lot about teamwork just as the result of growing up as a twin. His brother Brian in the stands here. Transfer from Tulane who, when he visited Maryland, told Coach Williams, I'm transferring because I want to win a national championship. Short again. He doesn't stay with a shot. That was Mouton who kept that one alive, Jim. The things that don't show up in that box score. Mouton. Again, trying to get the ball to Dixon, but Fife right there. Outside a push off first, called on Fife. Juan Dixon, Jim, wants the ball down the stretch. Fife, who's played as good a defense as a, as a guard as I've seen in NCAA tournament play a long time, but he's up against a guy that's one of the great competitors we've seen in college basketball. It'll be double bonus time, so. Juan Dixon will shoot two with his brother Phil, his inspiration. Ooh, that, Hold on, this is first. interesting here. The ball was handled, handed to the shooter, and they took it away from him. Gary Williams would like to have that one back. Yeah, well, let's see. There he is, a Baltimore policeman. It's made such a difference in Juan's life after they lost their parents. He believed in me, Juan told us yesterday, and that made me believe in myself. One more. And now a nine point advantage for Maryland. Timeout on the floor, 243 remaining. Maryland clinging to a lead over Indiana, and Lonnie Baxter spent most of the last time out on his back. He's been cramping in his calf, and you've noticed, Jim and Billy, that he's been very tired. He's played a lot of minutes, but yep. it looks like he's going to be okay, guys. You saw that coming. Thank you, Bonnie. Billy? Yeah, I think that Baxter playing so many minutes in this, uh, particularly in this second half, being asked. And there's a timeout. Good defense by Holden. Holden has just made so many good moves with his brains in this tournament. Timeout on the floor. We'll be right back. We're back with 2.43 remaining. Indiana with two timeouts left. Good overplay by Maryland on that play. Coverdale, as we said, you knew he was going to come back and have to stay in this game. Good defense by Maryland. Moving their feet a lot better right now. And a turnover pass. Out of the reach of Jeffries. That was an excellent defensive sequence by Maryland. They were really ready for it. And a reach in. It'll send Blake to the line. Coverdale called for his second. Jim, this uh, Maryland team has been very resilient in this game tonight. And you think of all the things that Gary Williams, you know he has been battling in his career. He is 0-7 against Indiana. 0-6 when he was at Ohio State. 
0-1 when he was at Boston College. You have Maryland in a situation never having beaten Indiana. And then Gary watches a game in which a few years ago he had had a heart attack. It's amazing how he has calmed down because, and give Indiana some credit, they're a feisty team to play against, but this is not the Maryland club that I'm sure Gary expected the field tonight, but here they find themselves only two minutes away from their first national championship possibility. Coverdale, three-point shot. Wilcox tipped around to Newton, and that's influenced by Holden. Is that a foul? And that is Mouton, Jim, with another incredible job on the boards. You know, again, as you, you made a great point, Jim. It won't show up on the scoreboard. But that save that Mouton made down the other end, keeping the ball alive. And here he is battling underneath against the bigger guys. There's Mouton coming from the outside, a senior who started out not at Maryland, has transferred in and has been a terrific player. Juan Dixon said that the other day, Jason Williams told him, you know what? Brian Mouton really makes all the difference on your team. Jim, I'm thinking about the Wisconsin game, a game in which he was 0 for 4 from the field and had those seven huge rebounds. So he, just because he wasn't shooting well, he wasn't giving up on his game. This has been a resilient Maryland team tonight. Largest lead of the night, and then Indiana will have to reach deep into that who's your lore to get back into this one. Rebound, Wilcox, and there's a foul on Newton at 143. Gary Williams' daughter. His daughter, Kristen. The joy of his life. Gary probably cannot believe the performance of his team tonight and to think that he is just minutes away. You saw for a moment from there. his alma mater as to the national championship. His grandson, David, there he is. And Billy, I go back to Thursday night when we had a gathering of all the four coaches. And we saw a side of Gary Williams that no one had ever seen. He got so choked up talking about, don't show me, show my daughter, show my grandson. And that will tell you my story. Coverdale, three-point shot. Wilcox. I get back to that Dixon three-point shot just after Indiana had taken the lead. A 22-5 run for Maryland. This is the Maryland team we expected to see at the start of the game, Jim. They are picking up their defensive intensity. They now seem very confident. That, that man right there has got to be happy. And how about the happiness at the legendary Cole Fieldhouse? They're starting to celebrate back home. They played their last game there this season. They'll be moving into a new arena, but first, if they go on and win this, they're going to hang that championship banner, albeit briefly, at Cole so they can move the tradition over to their new arena. Well, they have 12 years in that facility where they've won 84 straight games, the leading streak in the country of non-conference wins, so they left in good shape. It was the arena, however, Jim. Remember last year when they lost to Duke? Then they went on that tailspin, lost to Florida State at home. They basically were booed and then got on that roll that led them to the Final Four. They were not to be denied this year, however. Strange game, one of the strangest Final Four games I've ever seen. Very odd, out of sync from the start. Perry puts it up wildly, Wilcox with the rebound, but it was the Maryland seniors really down the stretch with Baxter and especially Dixon. Well, that jump shot that Dixon made from the side was a classic. One field goal for Indiana the last seven minutes. Could be a five-second call here. Yes, it is. I don't know. Juan was expecting to be fouled, and it never happened. You know, we saw that shot of Cole Fieldhouse, and the first time Gary Williams ever attended a, a national championship game, he <laughs> snuck in. The legendary battle, Texas Western. You and Usher, he was a player at Maryland, and he snuck in. Heard his way here tonight, that's your... And Hornsby shot blocked. Move time. Move time. Move time. The ball. Blake will hold it, not wanting to get fouled. Indiana does not want to foul. Hats off to this Hoosier team. And it's team effort. And it's humble coach Mike Davis. A wonderful run. 
to the championship game. Well, when you're not playing your best and you can still be a champion, that's a real tribute to a bunch of players, and that was the case for Maryland tonight. Dixon will give it back to Indiana. And Gary is laughing at Juan, saying, hey, <laughs> let's not just give it away. Go ahead and try to score. There's Wilcox, Gary Williams finally now saying we've won this ball game. Count the basket by Perry. Maryland will get to end the game with the ball in their hands. Give it to Dixon. He deserves it. It's his shining moment. And for all the Terrapins as well, a first ever national championship. The two seniors, part of more wins in four years than any time in Maryland's history, just jump on each other. Unusual game but a very outstanding champion. Davis and Tom Coverdale can't hang their heads for too long. A sensational run to the final. When you talk about Billy, your basic alumni contribution, Gary Williams becomes the first coach to return to his alma mater and win a national championship since Norm Sloan did so for North Carolina State in 1974. And a real breathtaking stretch, if you will to the title a run through some of the story programs in basketball history the last five teams they beat to win the title all were national championship programs Wisconsin Kentucky Connecticut Kansas and Indiana that has never happened in the history of the game beating five straight national championship programs to win the title. Lonnie Baxter's mother, her son always wanted to wear that Terrapin jersey. He wears it for the last time as a champion. Juan, Do Juan Dixon, is there any doubt? He has been named the most outstanding player. One shining moment indeed. We've had that straight ahead. We'll hear from the Terrapins in a moment. Our final score here at the Georgia Dome, the Maryland Terrapins claim their first ever national championship 64 to 52 over the Hoosiers of Indiana and still to come here in Atlanta. One shining moment, our annual CBS Sports signature tribute to the NCAA tournament. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Dane Fife and Juan Dixon. Dane Fife with 11 points, five rebounds, also did a superb defensive job this evening as he helped guard Juan Dixon. Juan Dixon still finishes with 18 points and five rebounds. The Terps leader came through when needed in their 64-52 victory. And now let's take you back courtside where Jim and Billy are standing by with the victorious Maryland Terrapins. Jim. Thank you, Greg, and I think, Gary, you'd agree there are moments that define your life, and this has got to be it for you. You're surrounded by your team. you got your grandson in your hands and your daughter at your side, and you've taken your alma mater to the national championship. How did you guys do it? It's a great thrill. We had to really grind it because Indiana plays great defense. And when you don't run your offense, they make you pay, and it took us a good uh, 25 minutes, I thought, before we really ran our offense. Gary, at halftime, you had to say to your guys, look, we're not playing our kind of game. We still have a slight lead. What, what the message that you gave to those guys? Yeah, I said, you know, we, we, we did some things the first half that we don't usually do. Now, Indiana had something to do with it, but when we finally started to play our game, you know, we could get the ball inside, and I kept telling them that we could go inside, and we finally did. How about some of the individual guys? You've had the great opportunity to coach three seniors that have been so important to you. Lonnie Baxter tonight, Mouton, and, of course, Dixon. Not many coaches get that chance these days. Uh, all those guys have character, 
Uh, Byron went through a, a terrible thing this year and everybody knows Juan's story and Lonnie was you know a guy that nobody thought could play in the ACC so it's been a thrill for me to watch those guys work because every, every guy you recruit you'd like to have them work that hard but that doesn't always work that way. Jim, how about one of them right here? <laughs> and you saw the sign that said one shining moment. You know what that is. I want to ask you this. Indiana led for 13 seconds tonight. You come down and hit the three point shot that was the shot of the night. I, I was just trying to be patient, man. I knew that they were coming out to try to stop me. And I was just trying to let the game come to me. And Steve Blake set me up and I hit a big shot. And I'm so proud of Lonnie and Byron, coach. You know, everybody counted us out, man. And me and Lonnie. We beat all odds. We led our team to a national title, and I love these boys for that, man. You I said yesterday, I want to be a leader for my school one more time. How do you put it into words what this guy and all of these men behind you mean to you on championship night? I can't put it into words, man. I'm so proud of Coach. He took a chance on me. He proved a lot of people wrong. I love him for that. And these people back here, we worked hard, and we were consistent the whole year, and look where we are today. Gary, it's the sweetest sound in the world. I know you're the national champion. And you're the first man since 74 to take your school, your alma mater, to a national championship. It's a great feeling. Um, a lot of people involved, a lot of former players, a lot of assistant coaches, and the administration has to make that decision to allow us to be good enough. You got a job to do. You got to get a trophy and cut down some nets. All right. Nice going, Gary. Great going. Gary Williams, very popular in the coaching ranks. There are a lot of men out there celebrating with him tonight, Billy. Absolutely. Took over a program in the worst shape it's ever been in his life. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome, everyone, where Maryland has beaten Indiana 64-52. It's now time for the presentation of the NCAA Championship Trophy. Let's go now to public address announcer Jackie Bowe. Your attention, please. To present the championship awards tonight, here's the chairman of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee, Mr. Lee Fowler. On behalf of the NCAA Basketball Committee, we would like to congratulate both these fine teams for the effort they gave tonight and throughout this tournament. And now, Sid Dempsey, the president of the NCAA, will present the national championship trophy to Coach Gary Williams and the Maryland Terrapins. Thank you very much. On behalf of our uh, team, and especially our seniors, we'd like to thank all the people that followed us all those years, and here we are, so thanks very much. The Terrapins of Maryland, national champions. 2002. We'll take a time out here. When we come back, we'll hear from Indiana head coach Mike Davis. Armin Katayan talks with him right after this. As you look at the Georgia Dome from on high, all quiet on the outside, and it belies the wonderful action that took place here this evening. These aerial views provided by the Saturn Lightship team. Watch for the Saturn Lightship above premier sporting events nationwide. This reminder, coming up tonight on CBS after your late local news is Late Show with David Letterman, followed by Late Late Show with Craig Kilborn. And we welcome you back to Atlanta, everyone. And still to come here before we sign off is our tribute to the NCAA tournament. One shining moment. Just a few short moments ago, as there always is, there was a loser here tonight. That's head coach Mike Davis of the Indiana Hoosiers. Armin Katayan had a talk with him. Coach, you only had the lead for a brief 13-second period in the second half. What was the difference? Was it just too many turnovers, too much Maryland inside? Well, first of all, thank God just for us being here. Um, what a wonderful blessing to be able to play for a national championship. Um, Maryland's a great basketball team. We knew it would be tough coming to the game. Um, they're physical inside. Their guards are good. They're quick. Uh, we had no answer for them. Our, our guys played their hearts out, but Maryland deserve all the credit. 
It truly was a courageous effort, and you told me yesterday and actually today again, you felt blessed to be here in this game. What do you tell your team in just a few moments? Well, you know, just just just, just think about it. You know, there's a lot of teams that never get to this point, and, and we got here, and we had an opportunity. It was 42 to 42, and down the stretch, but Maryland stepped up and made big plays. Um, give us something to look forward to next year. Well, speaking of next year, you've raised a few questions about your future at Indiana. Is your future back in in, uh, in Bloomington? Well, this is where I want to be. Um, I mean, I love these guys. We have great recruits coming in. Um, we're going to sign some more recruits in, in the years to come. And it, we're on our way. I can tell you that we're definitely on our way. Coach, thank you very much. A tremendous season. And a classy Mike Davis uh, walking off the court with Tom Coverdale, who himself just had a courageous tournament. What a storybook ending this is, Clark. Maryland blew a 22-point lead to Duke and was eliminated from the Final Four last year. They come back to register this championship win, and Coach Gary Williams' first-ever win over Indiana in his career after seven losses. Well, it was certainly the best time for that to happen for Gary Williams, but you can't say enough about the play and the leadership of his seniors. Juan Dixon, Lonnie Baxter, and Byron Mouton. We're gonna take a look at Juan Dixon, who had five steals to go along with 18 points, but he makes impact plays at both ends of the floor. This three right here, after Indiana had gotten their first lead, and then he comes back with a step back jumper to give his team a little more breathing room. And we talked about it at the top, Greg. We said the difference very well could be the brilliance of, Lon, of Juan Dixon, and it was clearly indicated again tonight. He's been the most outstanding player throughout this year's tournament. And it, it has to be such such a sweet moment for Gary Williams. We saw his we saw his entire demeanor up there on, and, and I'm I'm frankly surprised that he held it together. You have to be happy for him. Oh, without uh, question, he's one of the terrific coaches in all of the college game, and he's enjoyable to be around. His players have great respect for him, and either way this went you were going to be happy for the winning coach because they represent their profession and their universities in fine fashion. One final note, the Indiana Hoosiers had two free throws made tonight, and that ties the all-time low for a championship game equaled by Dartmouth back in 1944 against Utah. A time out here when we come back. Our tribute to the NCAA tournament. One shining moment coming your way right after this. You know, I don't think there's much we can find fault with in this tournament. Of course, we say that this time <laughs> every right. year. No question, Greg. And one of the things I wanted to point out, Maryland won this game in a grinded out affair, a game that wasn't very pretty because they had heart and they played excellent defense. And we've already highlighted the brilliance of Baxter and Dixon. But worthy, worthy champions are the Maryland Terrapins. And awfully fun to watch. And so our congratulations to the mighty Maryland Terrapins. Gary Williams, 13th year as head coach, has proved to be the lucky one. But make no mistake, this talented team willed its own good fortune, driven by a promise they made to themselves when they left last year's Final Four empty-handed. A tip of the hat as well to Indiana. Coach Mike Davis and his team displayed heart, savvy, and class in making it past Duke and Oklahoma en route to tonight's title game. And now, time to close the curtain on CBS Sports' 21st year of covering March Madness. We salute all 65 tournament teams, as well as our own, the men and women who have made it possible for us to bring you so many shining moments. For my partner, Clark Kellogg, and for all of us here at CBS Sports, I'm Greg Gumbel. So long from Atlanta.
ball is tipped There you are You're running for your life You're as shoes as dawn all the years No one knows Just how it works But now it shows Time is short and the road is long In the blinking of an eye All oh, that moment's gone when it's done Win or lose, you always did your best Cause inside you That one shining moment you reach deep inside Feel the beat of your heart Feel the wind in your face It's more than they come test It's more than they Did your best Cause inside you knew That one shining moment You reached for the sky 